Thank you very much and good afternoon everyone. Um, so I stood here about a year ago at, at the summit 2014 and talked a little bit about the challenges that leaders face implementing open data in government. At that point in time we had an idea in our heads that um, if we could only find a way to connect some of these individuals who we were encountering driving this change around the world to each other, they would find ways uh, to support each other, to share ideas, to share inspiration. Um, so we did that. This year we launched uh, a project called the Open Data Leaders Network. Um, and uh, rather than me explaining it, um, we have some fantastic, some fantastic colleagues in Lightweight Media who helped us produce uh, a short video. And I've been told if I say the words video and step back, it'll magically appear. <laughs> The ODI's Open Data Leaders Network is a small group of open data practitioners drawn together from countries all around the world for a week of, of shared learning and training. Seven heads of open data initiatives, exchanging stories and insights and ideas, meeting with different um, experts and people who can skill them up. We share um, um, our success stories, share our values, share ideas, talk about challenges. The biggest challenges we face championing open data within, within the government is a lack of understanding of just what open data is. You represent a new philosophy inside government, and usually government are very complex spaces. We don't have a standard roadmap. We don't have something that has been done before we're trying to adopt. You're basically treading on tread grounds, if I could say that. And um, that's a pretty difficult one. One of the things that's great about bringing people together from different countries is that they have very similar problems already. You understand that nobody's doing everything and everyone is getting something right. You find out that those challenges you're facing, it's not new, you're not alone in it, and someone has probably solved the problem you're facing in your own country. Coming here to m meet with this network has uh, reminded me how lonely we are back home. You know, we do it amongst our small team of three, but that's not really giving us new perspectives as a result. So um, it's, yeah, it's very therapeutic to come and talk to others. All these people were willing to, to share what they were doing and what was working and what wasn't. Just the camaraderie uh, of, of being sole evangelists amongst uh, a, a, a nation of people that we have to convert. I get very agile when I'm back from attending events because I always have something new to implement. We hope that each Open Data Leader leaves feeling inspired, motivated and equipped. And we really hope that this contributes to strengthening the, uh, the impact and sustainability of government open data initiatives around the world. We're really quite proud of what, well mostly they, have been able to build. There's now uh, 14 heads of initiatives who um, are sharing ideas and moral support um, uh, across four continents. Um, it should be noted that they're sharing that information not on the beautiful, uh, perfectly curated online platform that we built, but on a WhatsApp group. Um, and that's, uh, um, I, I think, quite wonderful. In the same way that uh, we did all our research and you know, we knew that building trust was important to build a network, so we had lots of trust building exercises. And then one night they kind of ignored our dinner reservation we'd made for them, got lost on the tube trying to find um, various landmarks and came in the next day with a bond that could never be broken. Um, um, so we have, a, we have a full kind of lessons learned um, on the project coming out towards the end of the year, uh, which we're happy to share with anybody. But what I wanted to take a few minutes to talk at to share with you all today um, is some of the things that we have learned from these guys as individuals. Um, we kind of see them as public sector entrepreneurs and they're really at the cold face of driving some of this change uh, in government and they're experiencing um, and, and, and approaching that in, in very interesting ways we think for the open data sector as a whole. Um, 
And uh, actually, a couple of these insights come from the fact that our first cohort, um, who were uh, seven individuals, um, now that we're kind of nine months um, after they've been through the program, uh, five of them are actually no longer leading open data initiatives in their country. Uh, instead, they've been promoted and are heading up various, um, various larger government reforms. Uh, and and they're, they're taking actually a lot of the tools that, we, that we're developing in this sector into reforming those, those broader, um, those, the, those, those bigger policy areas. Um, but also, it probably shouldn't have surprised us that, uh, that we have seen these transitions, that we have seen these, these changes, because a lot of the initiatives are approaching a tipping point. So what we're seeing is we're seeing um, open data starting from something where you need a kind of entrepreneurial, um, an entrepreneurial public sector innovator who's able to get those, um, get those kind of early pioneers, get the early adopters excited about a new idea and willing to take a risk on trying something, on, on trying a new innovation. Um, those early adopters are now on board and they're getting, their initiatives are getting into the, uh, the space of how do we get the majority on board and how do we start to think about the laggards. Um, and it is, it's a very different job uh, getting yourself from, um, getting an idea from, from zero to having a, enough people kind of on board um, um, to, get, to get it from there to thinking through of a consolidation or building role. Um, and in fact, it requires uh, a reframing of reform away from a high risk, high reward innovation to something routine and frankly something quite mundane, uh, especially in a government context. And we see in this a broader lesson for those of us working in the open data sector. We're increasingly getting to a tipping point where our role is changing from getting enthusiastic early adopters on board and trying to convince, to trying to convince a majority that open data is useful uh, and frankly mundane. Um, this requires us adopting new approaches and practices and, um, and potentially even sort of changing our language and our way of, of working on things. A second observation that we've seen is that um, in a lot of the, in, in the case of a lot of the members of the network, um, there's definitely been a sort of a, a maturation, uh, um, um, a sort of a, a growing up in a way of, of their projects and, and of the implementation of open data in their governments. Whereas 12 months ago, what we primarily were seeing still was a data first approach. So starting by publishing some data then thinking about publishing more data and better data, and then you know, getting on to thinking about use, which is sort of where I think um, most initiatives start, and, and, and they should start. But what we're seeing now is that the best initiatives are, are starting to evolve, and they're starting to work with problem owners and with use from the very beginning. Um, and in those cases, what we're seeing is the heads of initiatives looking at open data as a means of achieving the ends of others, um, so, for example, in, in Mexico, um, and Enrique is one of our members of the network, and they have um, a, a very serious problem of um, low birth weights among indigenous mothers. So the team there who are embedded within the presidency are running a couple of pilot projects which bring together behavioral economics, mobile technologies, and the creative use of open data, and of bringing together different data sources. So what, what that team there have decided to do is to stop thinking about uh, having open data as the headline in the stories that they want to write and start thinking about it as maybe in the second paragraph or maybe the kind of punchline at the end. Uh, so, you know, some positive things are happening um, and, and it, is because, it is because of open data. And we, we, we can see this evolution through Godan and through lots of other work that's happening in our sector as well. Because um, in order to scale, in order to really start cementing the impact that we're seeing, we need all to shift from a data-first approach um, to a problem-first approach and to sort of let, let some of our um, uh, evangelism, which I'm guilty of on many occasions, let that take a bit of a back seat uh, and, and really try and figure out where people are at. So we see in this, so we, we see in these lessons um, two, quick, two key questions for the open data community as a whole. As reformers, now that in many places we have the early adopters on board, how are we going to adapt our practices so that we can appeal to, empower, and permit others to find a way that open data can help them solve their problems? Or to put it more simply, how are we going to change our tactics so that we can truly scale? Um, and secondly, as advocates, how can we shift from a data-first approach to a problem-first approach? And how can we think about taking our, our tools and our perspectives to help solve the problems of others? These are just two of the questions that we'll be exploring next year as part of our international development work. Um, which uh, we're very grateful is part of the Open Data for Development Network funded by the IDRC, which is part of the Canadian government. Um, and uh, we're always looking for partners and for collaborators in doing that. 
Um, I'm going to ask a couple of my colleagues to stand up and maybe if you have, uh, if you're able to um, uh, partner with us, if you're interested in being a participant in any of these programs, do join us. We have um, Richard, uh, um, Emma, Fiona, Dawn and Will are all in the room. So come grab us at the break and, and have a chat. Thank you.